YouTube. Today in the Naughty Librarian, I am giving you guys a lot of book recommendations. So earlier in the week, I posted like on Instagram and on YouTube and I was like, hey, do you have any oddly specific book recommendations you need? If so, let me know and I'll put it in a video. And here we are. Here's the video. <laughs> and you know, I did get a lot more recommendation requests than I thought I was gonna get and also the vast majority of them were smutty. So I feel like people come to me for very specific content. <laughs> but hey, you know what? I like recommending smutty books. Let's go. All right, so someone wanted me to recommend a book that featured a trope that I don't like, but somehow still worked in this particular book. I went with My Darling Duke by Stacey Reed. This is a Beauty and the Beast-esque retelling, and I do not like Beauty and the Beast retellings. I am sick of them. I know there's so many out there and I just, ugh, bleh, like, <laughs> every time I see, oh, Beauty and the Beast retelling, I like put the book down. Like I just, it doesn't appeal to me. And this one I went into not knowing that. So I was like, okay. Like it's very apparently a Beauty and the Beast retelling, but it's done so well that like I love it. I never, who knew? Not me. <laughs> You got a sassy wallflower named Catherine, and then you have a scarred Duke Alexander. And uh, basically, uh, Kitty Catherine, she's like, oh, I've got to like make matches for my sisters so they could get good husbands, they could get money, because our family's broke as shit. So um, uh, I'm just gonna tell everybody I'm the Duke's fiance, because no one's seen him in like 10 years. Like, I'm totally the Duke's fiance, guys, or whatever. And then like, it blows out of proportion. And now it's like in the paper every day. And eventually, Alexander finds out he has a fiance he never knew. <laughs> And of course, um, things happen, you know, he's scarred, he wears like a fan of the opera mask and stuff. He's a spinal injury. He's got a lot of like health issues and he shows up and he's just like, you gotta come to my house and hang out with me. And it's just like, it's very Beauty and the Beast, but it like, it works really well. You guys also wanted an adult fantasy story that's not epic fantasy. And also like there was mentioned that I get bonus points if it's a standalone and I was like, okay, I love extra credit. <laughs> I picked An Unkindness of Magicians by Kat Howard. I don't think this is epic fantasy. It happens more in like regular old New York, but there's this secret organization of um, like wizards, magic people, and they have this like battle royale against all these like different magical families and whoever comes out on top gets like, um, they're like the leader of the magical world or something. I read it a while ago, so I, I, I'm a little loose <laughs> on exact details. But since it happens in the real world and it's like the world isn't ending, no one has to save the world from anything, I feel like it's not epic fantasy. It's kind of more, I don't know, urban fantasy. And there's like a smidge of romance in this, but it's definitely not a romance. Like I would not put this in the romance section of the bookstore, but yeah, it's fantasy and standalone. So I'm getting those bonus points, killing it. Another recommendation requested is a good like witchy book where the witches are badass and they have like nature powers. And again, standalone bonus. So, okay, I see you. I'm getting my extra credit points. Now I am, a little bit stretching the parameters of this recommendation with this, but it is a standalone, so I feel like it evens out. <laughs> I recommend An Enchantment of Ravens by Margaret Rogerson. Now, this isn't necessarily witches, but it is fae, and they all have like very naturey powers, so the spirit is there <laughs> but i don't know if it's like witchcraft but the heroine in this totally badass really really like her our heroine in this one is named isabel and she is an artist she's a painter and uh, a lot of the patrons of the arts of this world are like you know the fae one day she's like um uh i don't know she 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 gets paid to make this portrait of the autumn prince and his name is rook and then she paints like emotion into his eyes and that's like not cool for fae people they're like no 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 you're weak now we're gonna kill you and so he's upset about this obviously so he takes her back to fae land and he's like you're standing trial for crimes because you put emotion in my eyes and that's not cool lady 
and then like everybody's trying to kill these people and they have nature magics and they have to like depend on each other for survival there's like a smidge of romance in here so i, I yeah it, it's not necessarily witches but it is magic and nature powers and a badass heroine and it's a standalone so i feel like it has like the spirit <laughs> of what the recommendation was asking for even though it's not exactly witches Another request is a smutty historical with a scarred duke. Mind you, I already talked about my darling duke that has a scarred duke. There's a lot of them out there, but like I would be remiss if I didn't recommend Tessa Dare because like that's kind of my jam everybody and in particular romancing the duke. This one is Izzy and Ransom. I know his name is Ransom. Great romance name. Anyway, so Izzy, she is um, like if Harry Potter was real, does that make sense? Like her father was a very famous author who wrote stories about this little girl named Izzy on all these adventures. So she's grown up and she's Izzy and all these people, there's like a cult following of these books and they like follow her around because it's Izzy from the books and they get really excited about it and they LARP. There is Regency era LARPing in this. <laughs> and I really like Izzy, she's, um, She's sassy, she's really smart, and she's also 26 and a little bit of a spinster. Like, she's not like the prettiest girl in town, essentially, and she's like, meh, she has like kind of self-esteem issues, and she's like, I just need a roof over my head, and she inherits this castle, so she goes to the castle. Turns out, it's not uninhabited. There's a guy who lives there, this duke named Ransom, and he and he's blind. He, he got blinded in a, some type of battle <laughs> so he has his own hardships and he kind of hides away from the world because you know he has like scarring on his eyes and, and he meets Izzy and he's just like you can't live in my house lady and she's like well actually like it's my house like here's the deed and he's like ah so they end up being like odd couple roommates and then you know more than that <laughs> It is delightfully smutty, sassy heroine, scarred duke. I feel like it hits all the criteria. I also got a request for a smutty office romance. And who, like I haven't read a smutty office romance in a minute, but if you want like a smutty office romance, you need to read Beautiful Bastard by Christina Lauren. Oh boy, is this smutty. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh it, it definitely takes place in the office it's like um like the ceo and like the executive assistant so like yeah like the power dynamic isn't great but she's such a force of nature that like i don't feel the power dynamic as strongly as i would if she was a bit more meek so like it kind of works and it's definitely office place romance and like for real guys i think they they do it in chapter one <laughs> so if you want something smutty it's so smutty it's hilarious as well it's really funny and it's an office-based romance so like please check this one out it's really really good i also got a request for a lesser known haunted house book and you know i know there are certain channels in booktube that deal primarily with like horror books I, I haven't watched a lot of them, so I don't know what exactly might be lesser known, but a book that I don't hear about very much on booktube is The Sundown Motel by Simone St. James. Now this is like haunted hotel to the max. It's great. It kind of takes place in two different time periods. You have it in the 1980s and you have 2017, so fairly recent. There's this woman named Carly and she has never been able to get the story of her aunt who went missing, her aunt Viv. She went missing in the 1980s and she's never been able to get out of her head. So she's like, I'm gonna do some investigating and see what happened to my aunt Viv. She goes to the Sundown Motel, which was the last place that her aunt Viv was known to work. I think the last place she was seen alive. So she gets a job there. She's like, I'm gonna do some investigating. And oh boy, this motel is so haunted. <laughs> And I'm not talking metaphorical emotional ghosts. I'm talking like real scary ass ghosts with like blood everywhere. Like it's good, it's ghosty, it's a good mystery story. I like the characters, I like the dual timelines. It's really, really good. So I recommend this one if you want like a good actual ghosty book. And so I just had a simple request for just a good romance. And uh, I mean, that's very broad. I could recommend a lot of things. So I just went with a romance I read recently, which is One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston. And I just adored it. It's really, really good. It's a FF romance. It's kind of a little time travel-y, but not really. 
And, and I like it because they're not trying to make it serious. Like, I hate time travel. It's like a trope I, I don't like. I hate it. And I only can like it if they're not trying to, like, make it make sense. They're like, yeah, it's, it's nonsense, right? <laughs> like, then I like it. And this one is also kind of nonsensy. So we're following Jane in August. August is kind of a cynical 20-something uh, woman. She moves to the big city. She moved to New York. And every day on the subway, she sees this woman named Jane, and she's kind of like her subway crush. Turns out, Jane has been stuck on the subway since the 1970s, and she doesn't age, and she can't leave the subway, and it, it's something to do with, like, electricity somehow, and she's, like, been sucked into the subway system. And uh, she doesn't age, so she's just, like, this other 20-something woman from the 70s on the subway. And their relationship works in different ways because, you know, Jane's mind just kind of forgets everything. She doesn't really know how long she's been there. It's a lot of, like, amnesia type of stuff. But, like, for some reason, August jogs a lot of her memories. And that's why she remembers August all the time. And it's, like, a really funny story. It's, like, silly time travel. It's also, like a little smutty and I just really liked it. I found it gosh darn delightful. It's really, really fun. I also got a request for a fast paced thriller with an expected ending. I think they meant unexpected ending because why would they want an expected ending? <laughs> so I'm going with unexpected. I'm just assuming that's what they meant. I picked The Darkest Corners by Kara Thomas. And this is uh, it's definitely a murder mystery, kind of thrillery book. And this is one of those books where I'm just like, I didn't pick the killer. And then you're like, whoa, that's a weird ending. And then like, it doesn't end. There's like another chapter afterward. And you're like, oh, what? <laughs> and then it blows your mind. <laughs> There's like a little PS at the end. And you're like, oh, we thought you were done with us. No, no, no. And then they throw in an extra thing and you're just like, uh, what? <laughs> like you don't have words and it blew my mind and I highly recommend. <laughs> I don't really want to get into details, but um, it kind of takes place in this small town in Pennsylvania. And I feel like the setting plays a big part of the story. It's one of those towns where like um, they, they had a good economy and they had this like, you know, factory, you know, you know, the, the plant was there and then when the plant shut down everyone kind of lost their jobs and now it's like this ghost town and like everyone's you know not doing well so I feel like that's a big part of the setting and part of the mood and we're following these two girls and they were childhood best friends and then something terrible happened one summer and they've gone separate ways uh, one of them moved away one of them stayed in the town and how they've grown up completely differently and how this has affected their mental states and like they, they both have issues <laughs> And um, you're not gonna guess the killer. It's it's like wow that can't, that that is a lot. And then and then the postscript ending. You're just like oh, what? <laughs> so yes, it has a very unexpected ending, and I love it. Please read this. I also got a request for a fantasy villain romance, and I agree. There's not a lot of villain-based fantasy romances, so I had to go with. The Shadows Between Us by Trisha Levenseller. So we're following Alessandra and the Shadow King, and both of them are just horrible people. It's like watching the evil king and the evil queen origin story. <laughs> like, they're both complete sociopaths. Totally. But, like, they like each other, and they have this, like, romantic relationship with each other. Is it kind of a fucked up relationship, too? Like, a little bit? Yeah. Because mainly it starts off with Alessandra saying, okay, like, I got this plan. I got my life settled. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to the palace. I'm going to meet the king. I'm going to seduce the king. I'm going to marry the king. And then I'm going to kill him and be queen. Like, this is the best idea I've ever had. So that's kind of how the relationship starts. <laughs> And the king is very ruthless, like, he just kills people and doesn't care about it. And she's okay with it, too, because she also, like, kills people and doesn't really care about it. Like, the first line of the book is Alessandra saying, They never found the body of the first and only boy who broke my heart. And they never will. Because <laughs> she just killed him. So, um, yeah, very villainous characters. Uh, very twisted story there's violence there's like ruthlessness and they're, they're not good people you don't want to root for them they're awful but like they have a good romance with each other and like they're awful and terrible but they're hot damn are they exciting to read about and i really really enjoyed this one i recommend 
The next recommendations, I got two different ones. One of them was like an epic fantasy with super high stakes and then a fantasy with really low stakes. So both ends of the spectrum. And honestly, it was really hard to pick a book for both because it's fantasy. Almost all of the books in fantasy have high stakes. <laughs> so I was like, okay, let's just pick one of them. So for this one in particular, I went with The Ruin of Kings by Jen Lyons. The very high stakes. The whole world is in peril and it's up to Kieran to save it. There's literally demons on a hell march. They came out of hell and they're murdering everybody. They're like, we gotta stop these demons because there's these wizards and this main wizard, Relos Var, he's like, hey, I'm gonna wake up King Demon and cause like stuff. And everyone's like, why would you do that? And so they gotta stop the, the King Demon guy from waking up, they gotta save the world, they've gotta stop the demons. Very, very high stakes. And honestly, I love this series. It's very, very complex, heavy world building. There's like an encyclopedia in the back of this book, and, and frankly, I'm okay with it. It's really good, the, the world building, all these different cultures and the magic system is all so well thought out and I love it intensely. However, it can get confusing because there's multiple timelines. There's reincarnation is a big thing in this. So like there's people are have been multiple lives and like people knew each other in past lives, but they don't know each other in this life. And then it's like complicated, but um, yeah, they got to save the world from demons. So I think the stakes are pretty freaking high. <laughs> As for low stakes fantasy, this was very, hard because like I think one of the main things about fantasy is that like they need to save the world that's usually what happens in fantasy so I picked Fate of the Fallen by Kel Cade and I'll explain like are the stakes in this high technically yes they need to save the world however they make fun of that fact so I feel it's more like a satirical high stakes and maybe this would work for you in this world, there's this big prophecy, right? And, and they prophesied the chosen one who's gonna save the world, and it's this guy, Matthias. And so Matthias has his best friend, Oslo. And you know, they're out in the woods doing stuff, and everyone's like, Matthias, you're the chosen one, and you know, blah, blah, blah. Except, they, this isn't a spoiler, it's a main part of the plot that Matthias, the chosen one, just gets killed off immediately. Like, just horribly murdered, and everyone's like, the fuck are we supposed to do now? <laughs> so Aslo's like, he was the chosen one. Oh no, oh no. Do I have to do it now? I have to fix it? <laughs> so it's very satirical they're making fun of the chosen one trope because you have this chosen one and he's dead immediately. <laughs> and then you have Aslo going throughout this world trying, you know, to save the world. Obviously he's not the best choice for it, but uh, I, I think like it's funny because it's satirical, it's making fun of these fantasy tropes. So I think it might work for this, even though the stakes are technically high. Someone requested a romance about saving animals and keeping them. I had to go with The Trouble with Mistletoe by Jill Shalvis. This is a second chance romance. It's also a holiday romance because it has mistletoe in the title. But it's Willa and Keen. And Willa owns like this little pet shop and she like rescues animals. And then Keen kind of gets saddled with the cat from hell. It's like, I think it's a great aunt's cat and he has to like take care of it now. And he's just like, I don't know what to do with cats. So he brings it to Willa. Turns out though, Willa and Keen knew each other in high school, except Keen doesn't remember Willa. Willa does remember Keen. She's like, oh, this fucker. <laughs> so, you know, second chance romance. Also, there's like, you know, grumpy cats. <laughs> and of course, you know, he does end up falling in love with the cat and keeping it. So I think it fits the bill. Perfect. Okay, someone wanted me to recommend a romantic thriller. And here's the thing. I don't really read romantic thrillers. I should. I have a couple on my shelf, but like all the ones I've read in the past, I haven't liked. <laughs> so I don't know what to do with that. But I thought this was like a funny idea to recommend. <laughs> I recommend You by Carolyn Kepnes because, um, well, it's definitely a thriller and technically you could say it's romantic. <laughs> It's, uh, it's basically like if a rom-com was like a horror movie and we're following Joe, he is um, just a complete psychopath and he stalks this woman 
and he it's basically all told in his perspective so it's all told in second perspective like he's talking to you as if you are the woman he's stalking and he's like how do like I manipulate her life so that she falls in love with me and it's like it's so demented but like oddly romantic because you're in his head and he's like I'm in love with this woman how do I get her to love me back you know and normal people would like handle that situation in a healthy way Joe he's like mm, I could probably murder some people <laughs> So, um, yeah, I don't know how romantic it is, but it's definitely a thriller and romance is a key aspect of the story. Someone wanted a smutty rom-com. So they wanted funny smut and I was like, all right, got it. I recommend Fix Her Up by Tessa Bailey. This is very smutty and also very funny. Like I remember laughing out loud, like not just smiling while I'm reading, no, like laughs came out of my mouth. <laughs> and it has like, Oh my word, like this is like grade A top notch smut. Like, oh my. And this is about Georgie and Travis. And Travis is kind of like a washed up baseball player. He's like made a mess of his life. And Georgie is like his friend's little sister. And she always had a big crush on him. And she's like, hey, you need to stop being like a sourpuss and like get on with shit. And like, he's like, fine. <laughs> And I really do kind of like their relationship. It's, um, he's like nice to her and she is always like the baby of the family so no one really takes her seriously. It's like that kind of stuff. But it's also hilarious and it hot damn is a smutty. <laughs> so someone asked me for an entertaining but also smutty fantasy sci-fi book. So I went with A Promise of Fire by Amanda Boucher. This is definitely a fantasy book but also dash of smut <laughs> like I feel like the cover definitely looks like a fantasy novel and it, it's definitely I don't know like you could put it in either section honestly because is there smutty delights yes there are but is this mainly fantasy driven kind of yeah I really really liked it it's kind of this world where it involves the Greek gods and how they're manipulating mortals and stuff and um, this this woman she's like the kingmaker and everyone wants to like have her and she's like I'm hiding out in the circus everybody and then Griffin comes along and he's just like hey lady like you're coming with us so like the relationship with Kat and Griffin doesn't start out great because technically it's kidnapping <laughs> But I mean, if you got kidnapped, you got kidnapped by like the best possible option. So I don't know. I thought it was really, really fun. It's a trilogy. A lot of Greek gods, Greek mythology, monsters, adventure, and also smut. So I think this is a good pick. Someone wanted a book with Viking vibes and they didn't specify smutty. However, most of my recommendations have been for smutty books. So I went ahead and did a smutty Viking book, which is A Heart of Blood and Ashes by Mila Vane. And you know, I didn't love the book, but like I understand its appeal. So like I get why people do really like this book. And it's kind of barbarians, um, kind of very Viking-esque. And we're following Maddock and Naveen. And Maddock, uh, he's like the, the leader of these barbarians. And um, Naveen is the daughter of the people who killed his parents. So he's just like, I'm gonna torture this lady. And she's like, hey, like, I hate my parents too. Let's fuck them up together. Like, I got an idea. You're gonna think I'm crazy, but here we go. Hey, instead of murdering me, Let's get married and you could put a baby in me and then I'll go take the throne because I'll be pregnant as shit. Like I got an heir already ready to go. And he's just like, this is not how I thought this day was going. <laughs> and um, it's very, very violent. Like there are multiple decapitations and also like very smutty. So, you know, I, I think it fits the bill. Someone wanted romance books featuring demons. And honestly, there are so many options to choose from. But a couple like different authors I recommend all the time. So I wanted to do one that's maybe lesser known. So I'm gonna recommend Pleasure Unbound by Larissa Ione. And this is like a whole series. Um, and, and it's like, okay, do you like Grey's Anatomy and also demons? This is the book series for you. <laughs> Basically there's demons 
and um, they have a hospital for demons and then they treat patients and stuff and also you know they gotta save the world and there's also like battles and monsters and bad demons and good demons etc demon hunters even there's a lot going on and uh, it, it's very smutty like this is uh, a seminist demon I mean seminist semen like <laughs> they got magical sperm I know just go with it, okay? Like, if you want it smutty, like, there, there you go. <laughs> but it's definitely got lots and lots of demons because it's a demon hospital. And I really like the series. There also is, like, a turn and then becomes a spin-off series. And it has the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse. So, it's great. I think it's lesser known, but very good. Someone wanted a book with a heroine that's over 30. Again, most of these recommendations have been for smut, so I went with Waiting for a Scott Like You by Eva Lee. This is a woman, she's honestly, I think she's in her late 40s. She has grown adult children. And uh, this guy, I think he's in his early 30s, and they meet up. It's very kind of like, uh, he has Ferris Bueller's Day Off vibes, if that makes sense. It's kind of loosely based around 80s movies, but it's a historical romance. So Beatrice and Duncan. Duncan is kind of uh, very much an army captain. He's very like serious. And then you have Beatrice who is kind of wild. She's like, hey, I'm a widow. My kids are grown. Like I'm going to go on a fuck wave through this country, everybody. <laughs> so um, very opposite personalities. And they're kind of on like this road trip from hell together. And they fall in love along the way. And you know, it is like a different dynamic because she's like in her late forties and he's like, 30, you know, it's a very, there are different places in their life. So it's a little, I don't know. She's like, this is going to work. And he's just like, this is going to work. Like, I don't, I don't want kids. Like, I don't need to make them like we're good. So I don't know. I think it's really, really, really good. It also has like a dash, a dash of kink. Like I would definitely say this is more like on the Brad Brat Tamer relationship spectrum. And it's really, really good. Also heroin is definitely over 30 years old. Someone wanted a good sci-fi book for beginners that also has a good romance in it. And I have to go with A Big Ship at the Edge of the Universe by Alex White. Now, I don't think this is a romance necessarily. Is there romances in it? Yes, there are. And it's a really, really good one. There's an FF romance in here that's like adorable and I love it. I refer to this book as a cheater sci-fi because it is very fantasy based. You're in space, you have spaceships, you have aliens, you have all of that. However, everybody has magic too. So if like you're a fantasy fan, I feel like it's a very natural shift into sci-fi because they're space wizards and you know they have to save the universe it's kind of a ragtag crew of misfits found family situation and it's funny it's hilarious the stakes are high there's magic there's space battles like it's got like everything I could ever want highly recommend Someone asked for a smutty romance featuring dragons and you know these are harder to find demons are everywhere but dragons like However, I don't have the physical book. I only have the ebook copy. And I read this so long ago. But there's a series by Gina Show Walter, and it's it's based in Atlantis. And the first book is called Heart of the Dragon. And basically there's these dragon shapeshifters and they like defend the gates of Atlantis and they have to like defend it like kick people out, kill people, blah blah blah. And they're they're a whole like gr like group community of dragon shifters and you know smutty delights ensue and it's been so long since i've read it but i remember there was really cool dragon shiftery bits in it so it's dragons it's atlantis it's a little older so i don't really know how it's going to stand up in today's audience but i liked it when i read it like probably 10 years ago <laughs> but yeah I recommend, I think it's really good. Last up, someone asked me for a book featuring a polyamorous relationship. So I chose In the Ravenous Dark by A.M. Strickland. This is a pansexual blood mage saving the world. There's also necromancy in this. Um, she basically has to start a rebellion amongst the, both the living and the dead to get rid of the evil king who is doing evil things and you know, literally, causing the world to die so she's like well we can't have this and and also um she's very polyamorous she has both a boyfriend and a girlfriend and boyfriend and girlfriend i don't think they're necessarily in a relationship with each other but they're both in a relationship with her but i still feel like that's a polyamorous relationship even if all parties aren't dating it's still polyamorous so 
It's amazing, by the way. I don't know if I'm doing a good job of describing it, but it's so freaking good. I highly recommend this. Okay, so I feel like this video is gonna be very long, but it's a lot of recommendations. Like I said, I got way more requests than I thought I was gonna get. <laughs> Uh, let me know in the comments down below. Uh, is, is there any other recommendations you are looking for? If so, let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like. And if you want to see more videos, make sure you subscribe. And I'll see you guys soon.